Welcome, dear friends. In today's video, we're tackling one of the most debated and intriguing stories in the Bible. Was Jonah truly swallowed by a whale? The story of Jonah and the big fish has captured imaginations for centuries, but many skeptics question the plausibility of such a miraculous event. Was it a literal whale? A symbolic tale? Or is there a deeper meaning to uncover? Stick around as we dive into the details of Jonah's journey, exploring the possible explanations and what this remarkable story might teach us about faith, obedience, and divine intervention. Let's get started. The book of Jonah recounts the story of a disobedient prophet who, upon being swallowed by a whale or a great fish and vomited upon the shore, reluctantly led the reprobate city of Nineveh to repentance. The Bible's plain teaching is that, yes, Jonah was truly swallowed by a whale or a great fish. The story of Jonah, as told in the Bible, has often been a subject of scrutiny and skepticism due to its miraculous nature. These extraordinary events, central to the narrative, challenge natural explanations and highlight divine intervention at every turn. The account begins with a dramatic display of God's power over nature. A violent storm is summoned by God, threatening to destroy the ship carrying Jonah as he flees from his divine mission. The storm's ferocity leaves the crew desperate, prompting them to throw Jonah overboard at his own request. As soon as Jonah hits the water, the storm miraculously ceases, leaving the sailors in awe and reverence of God's might. Jonah 1 15, 16. What happens next is one of the most debated aspects of Jonah's story. A massive fish, divinely appointed, swallows the prophet whole, sparing him from drowning. Jonah spends three days and three nights in the belly of this great fish, a span that some interpret as a miraculous survival and others as a symbolic death and resurrection. At God's command, the fish vomits Jonah onto dry land, positioning him back on the path of his divine mission, Jonah 2.10. Jonah, albeit reluctantly, proceeds to Nineveh to deliver God's message, but his story doesn't end there. Later, as Jonah observes Nineveh's fate from a distance, God appoints a gourd to grow rapidly, providing Jonah with much-needed shade and comfort from the scorching heat. However, this relief is short-lived. The next day, God sends a worm to attack the gourd, causing it to wither. To add to Jonah's discomfort, God summons a scorching wind, leaving the prophet to wrestle with both physical and spiritual unease, Jonah 4, 8. Each of these miracles underscores the theme of God's sovereign control over nature and his unwavering pursuit of Jonah's heart. Whether read as historical fact, allegory, or a combination of both, the story of Jonah invites readers to consider the depths of divine power and mercy, even in the face of human resistance. God's use of a whale or great fish as Jonah's mode of transportation was sure to capture Nineveh's attention, given the prominence of Dagon worship in that particular area of the ancient world. Dagon was a fish god who enjoyed popularity among the pantheons of Mesopotamia and the eastern Mediterranean coast. He is mentioned several times in the Bible in relation to the Philistines. Images of Dagon have been found in palaces and temples in Nineveh and throughout the region. In some cases, he was represented as a man wearing a fish. In others, he was part man, part fish, a merman of sorts. Orientalist Henry Clay Trumbull observes, What better heralding as a divinely sent messenger to Nineveh could Jonah have had than to be thrown up out of the mouth of a great fish in the presence of witnesses, say on the coast of Phoenicia, where the fish god was a favorite object of worship? Some scholars have speculated that Jonah's appearance, bleached white from the action of the fish's digestive acids, would have been of great help to his cause. It could be that the Ninevites would have been greeted by a man whose skin, hair and clothes were bleached ghostly white, a man accompanied by a crowd of frenetic followers, many who had witnessed him being vomited upon the shore by a great fish. Given the piscine nature of Jonah's arrival, Nineveh's repentance follows from a logical progression. Apart from the Bible, there is no conclusive historical proof that Jonah was ever swallowed by a fish and lived to tell about it. However, there is some provocative corroboratory evidence. In the 3rd century BC, a Babylonian priest historian named Barossus wrote of a mythical creature named Oannes, who, according to Barossus, emerged from the sea to give divine wisdom to men. Scholars generally identify this mysterious fishman as an avatar of the Babylonian water god Ea, also known as Enki. The curious thing about Barossus's account is the name he used. 
Oannes. Barosus wrote in Greek during the Hellenistic period. Oannes is just a single letter removed from the Greek name Ioannes, which happens to be used in the Greek New Testament for Jonah. As for the I being dropped from Ioannes, Professor Trumbull writes, in the Assyrian inscriptions, the J of foreign words becomes I, or disappears altogether. Hence, Joanne, as the Greek representative of Jonah, would appear in Assyrian either as Ioannes or as Oans. Nineveh was an Assyrian city. What this essentially means is that Barosus wrote of a fishman named Jonah who emerged from the sea to give divine wisdom to man. A remarkable corroboration of the Hebrew account, Barosus claimed to have relied upon official Babylonian sources for his information. Nineveh was conquered by the Babylonians under King Nabopolassar in 612 BC, more than 300 years before Barosus. It is quite conceivable that record of Jonah's success in Nineveh was preserved in the writings available to Barosus. If so, it appears that Jonah was deified and mythologized over a period of three centuries, first by the Assyrians, who no doubt associated him with their fish god, Dagon, and then by the Babylonians, who appear to have hybridized him with their own water god, Ea. Jonah was not an imaginary figure invented to play the part of a disobedient prophet swallowed by a fish. He was part of Israel's prophetic history. Jonah appears in the Chronicles of Israel as the prophet who predicted Jeroboam II's military successes against Syria, 2 Kings 14.25. He is said to be the son of Amittai, cf. as Jonah 1.1, from the town of Gath-Hefer in Lower Galilee. Flavius Josephus reiterates these details in his Antiquities of the Jews. The city of Nineveh was rediscovered after more than 2,500 years of obscurity. It is now believed to have been the largest city in the world at the time of its demise. According to Sir Austin Henry Layard, who chronicled the rediscovery of Nineveh, the circumference of Greater Nineveh was exactly three days' journey, as recorded in Jonah 3.3. Prior to its rediscovery, skeptics scoffed at the possibility that so large a city could have existed in the ancient world. In fact, some skeptics denied the existence of Nineveh altogether. Its rediscovery in the mid-1800s proved to be a remarkable vindication for the Bible, which mentions Nineveh by name 18 times and dedicates two entire books, Jonah and Nahum, to its fate. It is interesting to note where the lost city of Nineveh was rediscovered. It was found buried beneath a pair of tells in the vicinity of Mosul in modern-day Iraq. These mounds are known by their local names, Kuyunjik and Nabi Yunus. Nabi Yunus happens to be Arabic for the prophet Jonah. As for the whale, or great fish that swallowed Jonah, the Bible doesn't specify what sort of marine animal it was. The Hebrew phrase used in the Old Testament, Gad al Dag, literally means great fish. The Greek used in the New Testament is Katos, which simply means sea creature. There are at least two species of Mediterranean marine life that are able to swallow a man whole. These are the cachalo, also known as the sperm whale, and the white shark. Both creatures are known to prowl the Mediterranean and have been known to sailors since antiquity. Skeptics scoff at the miracles described in the book of Jonah as if there were no mechanism by which such events could occur. That is their bias. We are inclined, however, to believe that there is one who is capable of manipulating natural phenomena in such supernatural ways. We believe that he is the creator of the natural realm and is not, therefore, circumscribed by it. We believe God sent Jonah to Nineveh to bring about their repentance, and that in the process, Jonah was swallowed by a whale or great fish. Jesus spoke of Jonah's ordeal as a real historical event. He used it as a typological metaphor for his own crucifixion and resurrection. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. Matthew 12, 40-41 The evidence is such that any Christian should have confidence to believe that Jonah was truly swallowed by a whale, and any skeptic should think twice before dismissing the story of Jonah as a fairy tale. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating exploration of Jonah's incredible story. Whether you view it as a miraculous historical event or a powerful allegory, the account challenges us to reflect on faith, obedience, and God's mercy. What do you think? Was Jonah truly swallowed by a whale, or is there a deeper symbolic message behind the narrative? Share your thoughts in the comments below.
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with someone who loves exploring biblical mysteries. Stay tuned for more thought-provoking content, and as always, keep seeking the truth. Until next time, stay blessed.